A very sad business, Georgiana. I don't think Father ever had a more true friend than you, Mr. Lowe. I remember after Mother's death, he took great comfort in you. Susan, he wept like a child for that woman. And now you give the same kindnesses to his children. Your father's death will not be the end of the Hyatt line. Yes, the torch must go on. We keep father's works alive. I'm assuming you've taken over the business and your father's estates. You have a good sense for it, Thomas. I make an effort. Thomas has surprised us all, really. And how do you fare, Catherine? Oh, I'm slowly easing myself back into society. Yes, it was the first time I've ever seen Captain miss a dance. And of course, you're back to your sharp tongue. It was nice for a while this past year, Mr. Lowe. These two were finally learning to be civil to each other. Well, at least you survived with your sense of humor intact. The wit of intelligent company heals all wounds. Isn't that right, Georgiana? I would know, Catherine. You haven't said an intelligent thing in years. <laughs> After such a long year, I see things are back to the status quo then. We've still much to pass through before our mourning is done. Your father was very proud of what you were becoming, Georgiana. Always bullying and bragging about his daughter. I hear you made quite a name for yourself. Tosh! The president of Eden Bridges Debating Society, on the Philosophical Association, a political advocate. You occupy quite prominent positions, especially for a woman. Yes, for a woman. You may as well put me in a zoo of rare species along with the unicorns and phoenixes. Right now, I'm a spectacle, a curiosity, nothing more. Now, Georgie. I have no illusions about the role the world expects me to play, Harold. Since when did you care two pence about expectations? But that's not what your father taught you to care about, now is it? No, it's not. Broad-minded man, society's infidel. And you've inherited more than a bit of his independence, haven't you? A bit, I suppose. I have something for you? For me? What is it? Open it, dear. Oh, it's magnificent. Your father gave it to me. Truly. He said, keep it sharp, Harold, keep it sharp. Cut off all those who would oppose you with a keen, dangerous wit. Dissect their logic and dig out their arguments. <laughs> it seemed appropriate to give it to you now. You truly are your father's daughter. And what does that make me? Your father's other daughter. Catherine, I haven't forgotten about you. I've brought you and Thomas your favorites. Sweets, Mr. Lowe, you always remember this. My sweet Thomas? <laughs> I've had it in mind to give it to you for many years now. Thank you. I will be true to the gift. Has the ache receded at all? Father taught me to be strong. Impervious. Yes, but... You would want me to keep being strong, Harold, and I used to become overly sentimental. Yes, I suppose, but... You loved him. Yes, but we had a different way of showing love in my family. That's true. Georgiana, you will do great things, but there will be those who try to stop you. But remember, you have a stronger force and a keener mind. A height. A height. But I must return if I'm to get back to London in time. When you visit your house in the spring, I expect to see you regularly. Thank you, Harold. You've been very thoughtful. Thomas, Catherine. <coughs> Thank you, Harold. Thank you again. again. You're welcome, my dear. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Lowe. Goodbye. Farewell, for now. So, why do you get the dagger? Obviously, Mr. Lowe thought the symbolism applied more to me. You are not sharp enough to cut bread. It's a family heirloom. That's enough, you two. May I see it, Georgiana? <sighs> my, it is a rather frightful-looking thing, isn't it? It's noble. Hmm. Thomas, you're such a sparrow! Nice, this is nice. Just think of it. Thomas the Conqueror. Uh, oh, does the dagger match my shoes? I think it's time to give it back, young Master Thomas. You seem to forget that I am the oldest here. The eldest, perhaps, but who's the wisest? You know, I've always thought I could be a military man. But just think of me in a war outfit with, with brass buttons, lots of brass buttons, and, and those other shiny things they put on you. Medals? Shiny boots, <laughs> ah, and white gloves, ooh. And Miss Jane Fields would be the perfect woman to stand by such a noble-looking man. You can't be serious. Well, I must say, the white gloves would be a necessity. Not the gloves, Jane Fields. Why not? Miss Fields is a lovely woman. <laughs> that hyena? Why, well, she's as loud as a parrot! <laughs> That's not the image just three years ago. She was a factory girl. It's vulgar. Tis not. 
She's a sweet girl. She calls me Teddy. And money is a definite attraction. You can't deny that. Her father worked hard in that factory, and he worked smart. Smart? That donkey? Are you so obsessed with the animal kingdom? Such fast jumping ought to be guarded against. Whatever your feelings against Mr. Mr. Field's personal manners may be, he made himself indispensable there. He's a mechanical and economic genius. Are you being serious? What about me is not serious? Am I dressed up like some jester with bells in a cap? What about me does not appear serious? Well, Father would have approved. You know that he would have, Georgiana. I love Papa as much as either of you, but I dare say he did have some of the queerest of ideas. Father didn't keep you and Catherine locked up in a box just for being girls? Uh, why then should you keep Jane locked up in a box? Papa still understood propriety. Please, Georgie, I would like your approval. Now why should you need my approval? You're supposed to be the head of this family now. What's supposed to be and what is are two different things. I do not like Jane Fields, Thomas. Well, not at all. You're always so serious, Georgie. Oh, let's finish our card. Oh, yes, I was winning. Miss Georgiana, there's a gentleman here for you. Shall I bring him in? Did he leave his name? Uh, Daryl Fredericksman. The publisher? What could he possibly want with you, Georgiana? Oh, do you think a publisher would wish to see you, Catherine, to publish your autobiography, perhaps? My, that would be fascinating. Did you see him at the assembly the other night, Catherine? No, was Mr. Fredericks there? She must have been too caught up with Mr. Johnson to notice. And Mr. James, and Mr. Evanston, and Mr. Baker. He was paying the most rapt attention to Georgiana. To Georgiana? But he's so very handsome, very respected. You are delightfully vain, aren't you, Catherine? Uh, please, don't get me wrong, Georgiana. I think I understand you perfectly. Mr. Fredericks and I have run a many of the same intellectual circles. Show him in, Mary. Uh, like a cricket on a skillet, Mum. Let's see if we can crack into the motivations of a man who would woo a she troll. Nonsense, Georgiana. I can't remember where we were. I was winning. Why don't we have Mr. Fredericks take a hand and we'll start over? But I was winning! Mr. Daryl Fredericks. Miss Hyatt. Why, Daryl, I was wondering when you'd take up my invitation. Come play cards with us. Oh, what a beautiful view you have in those gardens. I love gardens. Come, Daryl, play. A pleasure, certainly. The game is? Cards. <laughs> I was just talking about you, Mr. Fredericks. He's quite the accomplished man, you see, Kathy. All I can claim is my humble printing company. Note how modest he is. But you are the one who most certainly impressed me, Georgiana. You're a woman of nobility. You're a woman of gentle feeling. Truly? And my beauty? Why, that of a Greek goddess. A Greek goddess. Note that, Catherine. A Greek goddess. Artemis, the chase huntress. Athena, the goddess of wisdom. Aphrodite, the goddess of beauty. <laughs> you are a detestable liar. Pardon me, Miss Hyde? I'm hardly one of those simple women you're accustomed to luring in, Mr. Fredericks. You are as transparent as water. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> Do you deny that you go from wealthy woman to wealthy woman trying on each of their states for size? Gianna, your manners are enough to repel an elephant. A game with the animals. My, oh my. Well, I can play that game too, Catherine. Oh, look how you treated this good gentleman here. Suddenly Mr. Fredericks is as fragile as a hummingbird. Well, I actually did not come to see your sister, Catherine. I came to see you. As deceptive as chameleon. I was hoping that through Georgiana I would meet the fair Catherine, who I've heard so much about. You're as cunning as Since a Since I was well acquainted with Georgiana, I was hoping that through our friendship she would introduce me to you. You came to see me? You must be the most simple woman alive, Catherine. Someone ought to take those blades out of your mouth, and someone ought to take the champagne out of your brain. Come now, let us all be... You resent the fact that when I'm happily married, that you'll be an old spinster forever. If you're going to marry the light of Daryl Fredericks, I doubt you will ever be happy. So, Daryl, make a fine husband. What? Really, Georgiana, how could you be so rude to poor Mr. Fredericks? Poor really, God. ladies. Most <laughs> men seem to build up this Glittering bird of a woman. A docile, brainless thing of insignificance. If men desire.
there such a tender beast? I do not find many men worth having. On behalf of my gender, I'm flattered. <laughs> you do not fret, Daryl. I'm really not so mean-spirited as I seem. I just like a nice battle. For me, it's a sign of affection. By the way, I win. <gasps> you know I'm not very good at these games of chance. What, rather just a game of chance? Perhaps I should leave you to enjoy yourselves. Oh, do not feel compelled to live on the account of my sister, Daryl. Yes, I enjoy a good one. I want to bath. show you the new furnishings in the ballroom, and then you must see the gardens up close. Well, I do not think Georgiana would like oh, me to. Oh, but I would like you to. Well, then, <laughs> let's all go together, as a group. What? <laughs> Delighted, thrilled, excited. Behave yourself. I can't help it if Catherine doesn't know when she's being consulted. She knows when she's being insulted. She just does not know how she is being insulted. <laughs> what would I do without you, Thomas? Well, with Catherine as your sole company. Die of boredom, I suppose. <laughs> Why, we're in the mile with visitors today, aren't we? As stuffed as a duck on Christmas, I dare say. Oh, it sounds like they're in the ballroom. I, you don't recognise me, do you, Mary? Should I? Stephen Lockhart. Mm, Lockhart. <gasps> Little Stevie Lockhart from Edenbridge School. Yes, yes. I was wondering when you'd catch on, Mary. Oh, you've grown taller, sir. <laughs> and filled out nicely. Oh, nicely, indeed. <laughs> Those were dramatic times in the household, weren't they, sir? Yes, yes. You should have heard the type of things being bandied about when Georgiana and Catherine were allowed to enroll. The only women ever allowed, do you remember? <laughs> and they made quite the fuss. Oh, Mr. Hyde, the schoolmaster, called it their great experiment. <laughs> the women's revolution didn't last long, did it? Georgiana and Catherine are still the only females to have ever graduated from Edenbridge School. Couldn't have all the boys' parents pulling their children out at once, could they? Oh, not the <laughs> boys minded that, did they? No, well, I can't say we did. Oh, but it was more than that, wasn't it? <sighs> Those two used to come home with tears in their eyes nearly every day for all the teasing they would get. Funny, I can't imagine Georgie crying. She put on a strong face. She took it bravely. Oh, she's got plenty of pluck, sir. <laughs> she may rub some the wrong way, but right. she's got plenty of pluck. It's good to be back here. Eden Bridge, this beautiful piece of paradise. Ah, childhood memories run deep, don't they, sir? Yes. Well, it's good to see you're just as free with the guests as you always were, Mary. Oh, <laughs> well, the Hyatts were never very strict with me about that sort of thing. They all followed old Mr. Hyatt's ideas that way. Mm. Uh, I recognise that I'm given many freedoms most servants wouldn't dare take. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you persist in pursuing oh, my company? Because Catherine and Thomas cannot keep up with my long legs, so I wish to amuse my time with you. How did you say it before? Oh, yes, I enjoy a good farce. The venom of your mouth would be the death of anyone if your lips were not so small and petite. Oh, if you knew what else I'd done with these lips, you'd be jealous. Hardly. My, you just sprint when you argue, don't you? Why? Who is this, Mary? Mm -hmm. Prepare yourself, Mum. This is Mr. Stephen Lockhart. What? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I didn't die, you know. Simp of incidents. Simp of incidents. Simp of incidents. Simp of incidents. It is good to see you, Jack. You're a regular prodigal, eh? Thomas. You, Stephen, why, I hardly recognized you. You're quite different now. Well, I've grown taller. You've done much more than grow taller. Oh, and you were always that little girl that used to tease her older sister's awkward friend. Oh, I would that you would consider that I'd grown out of that peevish phase. I would. I'm much more adult than when you last saw me in my note. <clears throat> oh. This is our, uh, uh, Mr. Daryl Fredericks. Stephen Lockhart, pleasure to meet you, sir. I'm. Sure it is. <laughs> well, um, I heard about your father's death last year, and that's part of the reason why I've come, to offer my deepest and most sincere condolences. You are a ray of sunshine in a dark time, Stephen. Yes, you're an absolute beacon, oh, Stephen. <laughs> well, Catherine, Daryl has come to see you, oh. and Stephen has come to see well, me. Um, he was to sell perhaps you and Thomas. 
trip there around the gardens while I catch up with my dear friend. Yes, <laughs> my dear. For once, I agree with your sister. Uh, Stephen, you, you've changed, my friend. Oh, have I? Hmm. Where is my ungainly, bumbling friend? Uh, Where are his tousled hair and freckles? Well... Where is my awkward little <laughs> rich boy? All I see before me is a confident, poorish gentleman. And you, Georgie. I hear such rumours about you. It's rock. Don't believe a word of it. I do. I always knew you'd grow up to be something impressive. I'm hardly something impressive. Your father must have been pleased. What a blow that must have been to you. The ache is beginning to recede. <laughs> so the best way to comfort me at this time is not to speak of it. Mm. Especially with you here. Give me a way to serve you. How can I help you? Can I be honest? No, honest. I'll be frank, then. Hello, Frank. Oh, I'll tell you a game I'd almost forgotten. I hadn't. Georgia, I, I must admit, I, I planned this trip even before I heard about your father's death. I'd heard you could help me. In what way? Well, do you remember my ambition to be a writer? Yes, I thought them foolish notions at the time. Yes, yes well, I've, I've written something decent, Georgie. A periodical. What is it about? Oh, it's about um, honour and terror and depression and revenge. Amusing. Yes. You must let me read it. Well, I, I hear that you've become rather influential. You're so close to London here, and you're often in your home in the city. People say that you know people, and that people know you. People like publishers, and I was... Oh. That is to say... I see. Uh, well... I'm sure I can get someone to take a look at it. Well, truly, um... <laughs> publishers, publishers, I know quite a few, but which would be the most suitable? Hmm. There's Daryl. Oh, uh, is he a publisher? Yes, well, he says so. <laughs> On second thought, I do not think I would recommend him. Why, of course, our family knows a fine editor named Harold Lowe, who is a dear friend of my father's. Oh. If it only he'd been here earlier, he came by. Truly. <laughs> Stephen. Hmm. I think I know how I ought to do this. Why shouldn't we make a fine time of this? What do you mean? Do you dance better than you used to? I always danced well. Mm. Well, for someone my age, I danced remarkable. <laughs> Rested old Georgiana, yes, I danced better than I used to. Good, because Harold's family loves assemblies, parties, balls, and the like. If I were to host one here and make his presence, why, I know he would come. That's a splendid idea. I knew I could count on you. You always did impress me. I did. Yes, there was no person in that school, boy or girl, that was more intelligent than you were. Oh, there was no one so witty as you. Do you favor that? Why, it's when I've spent so much time with you. I thought we outcasts just naturally came together. Yes, but we're outcasts no longer. <laughs> you surprise me, Stephen. Why so? Why, well, I see you so differently now. You've changed. Well, how so? You seem to have more... Never mind. Always the sphinx you are. Well, keep your riddles. I'll surely discover the answers someday. I assure you, it'll take quite a remarkable man to discover the secrets that I hold. Oh, you don't think I'm up to the challenge, do you? Well, perhaps you are. Well, this Oedipus will have to solve your riddles another day, for I'm afraid I must be off. So soon? Yes, I have business in town. But rest assured, I will return in the evening, manuscript in hand, we'll really get to talk, just like we used to. I'll find Mary. She'll show me out. Don't bother. She's right behind the door. Aren't you, Mary? What? Just polishing the silver, ma'am. <laughs> Mary loves a good bit of gossip. She has an ear that is shaped well for keyholes. Yes. Oh. As innocent as a lamb in the butter, ma'am. I don't think I understand your analogy, Mary. Oh, well. <laughs> There's a certain wisdom that comes with age that most other people don't quite understand. <laughs> mm, I see. Well, thank you again. <laughs> I look forward to this evening. As do I. Farewell, dear friend. <laughs> and then she said that I had not the sense to discern a chuckle from a Labrador. And she said that the Labrador had more intelligence than I did. You were not so cruelly mistreated. A regular martyr, my dear. You must have as thick as he. They've always been like that. I so desperately wanted to be like them growing up. To be considered witty and intelligent. But I couldn't keep up, you see. 
You know what else she dared say? Why, she blatantly said that... Oh! Enough talking. <laughs> really? You're done. <laughs> you are exceptionally taking today, Catherine. Truly. Mum, uh, uh, Jeffrey's uh, finished to be done the horses. Is there anything else you wanted to do with them? That's quite all right, Mary. Put them in the stables. Yes, Mum. If you need me, Mum, I'll be as accessible as a cat looking for a rat. <laughs> that won't be needed, Mary. So, you think I'm taking even in this outfit? Yes, when I saw you on that horse, you looked so elegant and noble. A truly romantic figure. Do you truly think so? You know I do. I adore you. So you say. I can do much more than say it. <laughs> what are you doing? I was trying to kiss you. I am not cheap, Mr. Fredericks. Oh, is it Mr. Fredericks now? Yes, and it will continue to be so till you remember you are with a lady. I am a woman of high society. <laughs> you are made of the same metal I am, Catherine. Your marionettes and shadow shows do not fool me. You put on the proper face, which is good. We can't have anyone suspecting us, can we? I am in earnest, Mr. Fredericks. Do not pretend with me. I have seen your concealed looks and unblushing thoughts. I attract you, and it is certainly not because of my virtue. Yours. Shall I serve tea, Ma? <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Would Mr. Fredericks like to continue to be a burden and join you? I do not think that is necessary. <laughs> Very well, sir. Anything to please you, sir. <laughs> that maid of yours is quite the snoop, isn't she? Mary, she's, she's harmless. Well, I suppose I will see you in a couple of days when I call by again. Gerald, I'm all torn up. I, I'm not sure that I want you to go. Catherine, I consider myself a progressive man. I refuse to tie myself to artificial moralities. You think they're artificial? They are. But you, you are the dearest of women to me. You are like an exotic spice mixed with the sweetness of cinnamon. Fragrant, almost narcotic, like opium. I shall love you till the day I die. Wait, Mr. Fredericks, I... Daryl! Ha <laughs> ha. 
Has some gypsy had you under a trance? What do you mean? I've been calling you for 20 minutes. You have? Are you ill? No, I'm quite well. What is that you have your nose in? Nothing. Oh, well, now you do have me intrigued. <laughs> really, Thomas, it's nothing of consequence. I... Thomas, give that back! Why, it can't be. What a farce. What a delight. At a once, romance. give it back! Has the end of the world finally come? Is this what kept you up so late last night, Georgiana? It's fine literature. Jane Austen? <laughs> Never heard of her. Although I am sure she is rather skillful at telling a maudlin story of swooning maidens. Oh, Reginald, save me! I'm all alone in this big gargoyle castle! Ah. <laughs> I'm not being childish, Thomas. Honestly, I hardly recognize you, Georgiana. The severe spinster has become sentimental. Do not make a fool of yourself, Thomas. I have read nearly every other book in the house. My options were becoming rather narrow. Narrow indeed. Put it aside. I have another matter I want to address. Oh, that's serious, eh? What? Out with it. I wish to host a ball here Wait. and. Did you say a ball? Yes, a ball. Truly, you have been transformed. Uh, Catherine, come in here! Thomas, you traitor! Please Why, are you not. embarrassed? I am no such thing. Oh, of course not. I do not think you have ever been embarrassed. Your whole life completely unruffled. <laughs> Thomas, do not make this into something bigger than it is. Catherine! What are you off about? Georgiana wants to host a ball. I fear that our sister has been kidnapped and replaced by an evil twin. I've always enjoyed going to balls and assemblies with you, Catherine. Just to talk your serious talks or play your card games, would when have you ever been known to dance at a dance, Georgiana? I know how to dance. It is one thing to know how to dance, it is a completely different thing to be known to dance. Of course, that may be no fault of your own. One has to be asked first. That's enough, Catherine. Tell me, do you dispute the idea of a ball? Of course not. Very well then. We shall prepare the invitations, hire some musicians, prepare some elegant food and have a fine time. Oh, I've been just aching for something like this. Oh, Father's death has been such a foggy darkness. Yes, we must pay no disrespect to Father. No. I agree with Catherine for once. Our mourning is over. Oh, it's high time! Yes, Father will not want us to grieve forever. Very well. We shall make this the grandest ball this area has ever seen, then. Uh, but we will need to get you a new dress, Georgiana. I have plenty of dresses. Yes, and they all make you look like a mortician's wife. They're not suitable. Uh, Catherine, that uh, new dress you showed me yesterday, where did you get it? Oh, it's a bit embarrassing. A dingy little shop run by two young women. But the dress was so well made that I decided to buy it anyway. It was splendid. We will invite the dressmakers here to measure you, Georgiana. Thomas, No, I the matter is decided, and you have no say in it. Mary! Yes, sir. Hmm, I thought you might be listening, Mary. I'm just polishing the silver, sir. Mm. Uh, Catherine will write some, write some directions for you to a dress shop. Oh, the one on Dover Lane. <laughs> Tell the dressmakers that if they can come by after with some of their designs, that I will make it worth their fire. I'll be as fast as a hound after a fox, sir. If you have some sense, you know, I was planning on purchasing a new dress. I just did not want to make a big scene out of it. Oh, it'll be such a treat to see you play the part of the stylish creature. Do not think that this will be a regular thing with me. A treat, nonetheless. All the planning, the invitations, the musicians, the food, silverware and china, and the guest list. Oh, the guest list? The, the guest list? Oh! So is it Stephen? Pardon me. Stephen, I'm not blind, Georgiana. The ball, the romance mart novel. You are behaving peculiarly, and there is only one thing I know that causes that kind of peculiarity. <laughs> Don't be absurd. It's not absurd. It's an embarrassing accusation. It is not a crime to be in love. I'm not. Look at your behaviour. Don't you remember? I'm the one who's to never marry. <sighs> Georgiana. I make no illusions of the likelihood of... You are more vulnerable than I had thought. Do not mistake this, Thomas. I saw that he came again the other day. And the next, and the next. What's your point? What was it that he brought with him? His manuscript. He wanted to show me some parts of it. I see. <laughs> Could it be that someone has truly see. penetrated your armored heart? How can you Look see? at me. What? Look at me. You're treating me like a child. Look at me. <laughs> Just as I suspected. You're gone. <laughs> 
gone, gone where? Oh, Georgiana, do be frank with your brother for once. Gone, 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 gone. Thomas, <laughs> how can I say this in a way that you understand? It's not surgery, my dear. Thomas. Anyone can be wounded by Cupid's arrow, even you. Thomas, please. Thomas, Thomas, what are you doing now? Well, I'm looking for the arrow, of course. Thomas, please, be serious. This is painful. Oh, all right. Thomas, truly serious. Go on. I must ask you something, something... Something personal? Yes, something personal. Go on. How can I make myself... Say it. More attracted to a man. I never thought I'd hear you say that. Ernest, <laughs> please, Thomas. I don't know. How should I know? You're a man, aren't you? <sighs> Tell me what to do. I really am enjoying this moment very much. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds like foolishness. I have always ridiculed it as foolishness, but I have never wanted to look, well, attractive for a man. I thought I had more dignity than that, but as it is. It is a good move. If you want him as a man, treat him like a man by behaving like a woman. Pardon me. <laughs> Ornament your hair. Burn your wardrobe. <laughs> and uh, who you are talking to, Thomas? Georgie, there's, there is something hidden up in you, something none of us have seen. Let it out. You just have to help it, that's all. Do you truly think so? Absolutely. Well, I never thought about it to feel such that I would be... Yes? Well... Hmm? Frightened. Uh-huh, yes. What is fear claimed in matters of the heart? Welcome to our first taste of humility. Celebrate it, my dear. It is ironic. I always thought you the fool of the family, Thomas. And yet you turned to be the wisest to be sort of. Uh, uh, now, do be careful with that. It is our little secret. The disguise of the fool is a convenient device, and I am not likely to part with it. <laughs> what is it you do not like about the dress, Miss? If it is the colour, it's not the colour. Too much lace. And what if we were to take the lace off of the air? Would that suit you, Miss? No, it would not do. I will not be made up like one of these dolls, you understand. I have some dignity. Yes, that I can see, Miss. Of course, Miss. And are we only the one in green? Thank you. Now, this one is a bit plainer. Yes, it is plainer. Too plain. Something else. Yes, of course. The one with the train? Oh, no. That one is an abomination. The one next to it, then. Here are two more, and I bring them both over. Well, that one is unbearable, but but that one. I like that one. Excellent choice, Miss. The colour is terrible. Can you change it? Oh yes, of course, Miss. I should hope so. And now, if I could get your measurements, Miss Hyatt, Hannah, will you please get out the measurements? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lockhart is here. Sorry to barge in, but I'm barging in. <laughs> Stephen, I, I wasn't expecting you for another hour. I didn't expect to be so early either. Mary tried to stop me, but that only intrigued me more. I thought I could finally discover the answer to one of those cultish riddles of womanhood, if it was that clandestine. <laughs> You'd rather be stunned that you buying gifts to children. <laughs> Not exactly. Perhaps it's best to say... How can I? Oh, Stephen, I thought I heard your oh, voice in here. Oh, you, oh, Catherine. Oh, oh. It is for Catherine. These are dressmakers who've come to show me designs for a 
birthday present I'm having made for her. Sorry to spoil the surprise for you, my dear. Oh. A birthday present for me? Of course, dear sister, come back here more <laughs> to take your... I think I harshly misjudged you, Georgiana, for you are a dear sister indeed. For you to remember my birthday, for you to think of such a thoughtful way to express your affection and a Adoration and apologies. <laughs> don't you know your birthday's off for another six months? Well, yes. Yes, it's not for you. I don't want Stephen to know it's fine until the ball. But I'm so looking forward to a new friend. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so, we, before we get back to your periodical, tell me what do you think of these. What? Well, the <laughs> oh, they're very pretty dolls. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. No, the uh, dresses. Oh, I see. Which one is your favourite? Oh. I like the blue and yellow one. Of course, the most gaudy. Doesn't concern you, Catherine. Um, well... Uh, this one, here, with the lace. Yes. <laughs> that one? Yes, it's modest, but has an innate grace in its design. It's a beautiful piece of craftsmanship. Well, thank you, sir. Oh. <laughs> now, there are others. What do you give this one? Oh. Uh. It's a bit severe. Severe? <laughs> Where is its elegance and softness? Where is its beauty? It has strength. Strong. This is a dress for Catherine, is it not? She's a pretty girl who should have a pretty dress. Do you not think even Catherine should be so debased? Oh, Georgiana, there are some things men and women do simply to please each other. There's no pride in it. It's a humble submission to each other's feelings. I simply adore being measured! It always means something is coming. <laughs> Daryl Fredericks. Oh. Ah, good evening, beautiful Miss Catherine. Good evening, frightful Miss Georgiana. Oh. Revisiting your childhood. Why do you want to play dolls with me? And are these two young girls your playmates? Rather rough additions to your social circle, if you ask me. My relationship with these two is purely professional. They're making me Catherine a dress for all we are having. Yes, I am sure that Catherine has told you I will be attending. Mm -hmm. That is quite all right. I will not notice you. I will seat you behind the orchestra. Tis true, you will shuffle me off as you have your meagre playmates. Repent! What? Repent! <laughs> Repent, ye vile men and women of Babylon! Ye wicked sinners! Know ye not that the day shall come when the earth shall reel to and fro as a drunken man? Oh, oh, this oh. very house shall topple upon us! Repent! <laughs> Repent! <laughs> Repent! <laughs> so you have got yourself involved in now. Oh, why, today I got religion. <laughs> it was most entertaining. I'll show you. Mary! Yes, sir? Uh, could you bring in the gentleman at the door, please? Okay, sir. Don't. You didn't. I brought the religion home with me. <laughs> <laughs> My dear friends and family, we have apostles in our midst. May I introduce Mr. Brigham Young and John Taylor. They are preachers from America. Uh, they followed me home. <laughs> Keep them. <laughs> <laughs> this one has to be a joke. Well, I admit it is a rather novel treat, but I think you will find them rather serious. Uh, Latter Latter-day Saints, they call themselves. Uh, I just stumbled upon them, really, and, and opened them like Pandora's box. Um, <laughs> not so much like Pandora's box, sir. Uh, we have something much better to give the world. We have the truth. <laughs> the truth? Oh, do you hear that? He has the truth, and I bet you he'll sell it to us at a discount. I was just wandering absentmindedly through Liverpool when I heard this man's strong accent. Uh, I stopped to discover a whole group had gathered here to preach about about Jesus, oh, and, and angels, and scripture, and la la la. And, and after, after all, I, if you can imagine, they, they told me to repent and be baptized right where I stood, without any water in sight. <laughs> well, we had a pleasant conversation anyway, and I even bought a book off of them. No. That still does not explain why you brought them here. I told them that if they were brave enough, they could have a whole house full of infidels to preach to. Here you are. Come on, tell us something's never changed. <laughs> ah, introductions, yes. Ah, uh, Mr. Young, Mr. Taylor, yes. these are my lovely sisters, Miss Georgiana and Miss Catherine Hyatt. Mm. Uh, this is Stephen Lockhart yes. and Daryl Fredericks. It is a pleasure. Nice to meet you folks. Yeah, I think you will find you've got more than you bargained for, gentlemen, especially between my sister Georgiana and our friend Daryl. 
they are quite accomplished debaters. They have the opportunity to practice quite often on each other. Actually, I am already well acquainted with Mr. Young and Mr. Taylor. Why, Daryl, have you seen an angel? <laughs> Some <laughs> acclaimed agnostic like myself. Hardly. Yet I would dare say I am friends with these two gentlemen. Yes, we have met with Mr. Fredericks. You do not sound much like an American, Mr. Taylor. <coughs> oh, well, unlike Brother Brigham, I was born in England. Oh. <laughs> and uh, who are these two young ladies? Oh, do not fret yourself, Mr. Taylor. They're just a couple of dressmakers. Well, even dressmakers have names, do they not? I'm John Taylor. Um, yes, Governor, I'm Mr. Whitefield, and this is my sister, Hannah. Miss Esther, Miss Hannah, it is our honor. And who are you, ma'am? Oh, I'm just a servant, sir. What a coincidence. I'm a servant, too. I serve God. Oh, well. And you might say, I serve mammon. <laughs> Not too late to switch sides, you know. Oh. <laughs> Mary, my name's Mary. Excuse me, gentlemen. But is it some strange American custom for you to mingle with the hired help I'm neglecting your hosts? Hmm? I'm not surprised that religion does so well over there in your rough country, Mr. Young. The ignorant are always looking for another barrel to keep their superstitions afloat. <laughs> Intelligent, science, and noble philosophy are expected in England. Philosophy? Right from. Pardon me. Oh, well, um, in Paris, they have a sort of exceedingly light cake. It is so light that you could blow it away. You eat all day of it and never be satisfied. And, um, somebody asked me the name of it once, and I said, well, I cannot recall the proper name, but in the absence of one, I can give it one. I call it fried froth, or the philosophies of men. Oh, <laughs> oh and you are so substantial. We carry God's truth restored, man. Yes, uh, to, to make a long story short, an angel appeared to a young man and led him to an ancient record, which he translated by the power of God, etc., etc., etc. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, now, if you could, please. Did he say angel? <laughs> Who do you think you're talking to, gentlemen? Fairy tales of children, not us. Do you not believe in God, miss? I believe in myself. Whether there is a God or not, it does not much concern me. There are greater truths than you understand, ma'am. Greater powers and greater beings. Yes, but where is your proof? It's still just a story to me. You're talking to a writer when that knows how to craft a believable story. So you like stories, then? Yes. I've got a story for you. There once was a farmer who bought a plot of land in a far-off country, far away from civilization. A man came to him selling seeds and said... These seeds will sustain your life. The farmer said, how can I trust you? How can I trust these seeds will do what you say they will do? And how did he answer, Rabbi? The man said, you don't have to trust me. Here, eat of the fruit that is produced by that seed. The farmer said, how can I trust that is not poisonous? The man said, trust me. The farmer said, I trust proof. And soon, having put no seeds in the ground and no food in his mouth but weeds and acorns, the farmer starved and died. <laughs> a regular parable, right in our own home. That was, that was lovely. Uh, thank you very much. But you still never explain whether the seeds were poisoned or not. I thought that was obvious. No, sir, not so obvious. Gentlemen, the comments you make will be nothing more than the poor, ignorant classes of England. So you will do us a favor if you will export them out of here into your own country. Now, wait a minute, George Young. <laughs> you of all people cannot possibly be defending the Bible well as Mr. Frederick. Please, Georgiana, I have something to say. Unlike the rest of you, I spent some time with these men and their associates, but more importantly, time among the class of people they convert. The class of people you have so degraded. Am I incorrect in my estimations of their ignorance? Whatever your prejudices about the laborers are, Georgiana, these people are the ones making our bread. They're the ones building our homes. They are building our trains and carriages. Men and women like Mary here and the dressmakers are the ones who literally make the clothes on our backs. If they will go to America and build the Latter-day Saints into a great nation, we would moulder and rot. <coughs> Without these lower classes, Georgiana, what are you good for? <laughs> Dear. Um, well, uh, we'd like to thank Thomas's guests for coming. But we shall not detain them any longer. What? No rebuttal? With all due respect, Papa, pay to the captains of industry, I hardly expect a middle class man such as yourself to understand. Your dear Papa certainly liked to dabble in business himself. Yes, sir, but my father played with business because it was his hobby. Uh, Georgie, I'm you don't... do so because you have to work to survive. That is the difference between us, Mr. Fredericks. That is the gulf that will always separate us, for better or worse. And 
That's it. That's your great defense. <laughs> Do you understand the utter hypocritical bile you just spit out? I've already explained myself to the preachers, and I have no inclination to deal with your duties. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Young. Good evening, Mr. Taylor. Oh, dear. What is it, Thomas? A Carmen. A who? The opera. Oh, heavens. What? Good afternoon, all. Stephen, I forgot to tell you, we brought an extra seat in our box, and I was hoping you would come with us. Oh, I don't think I'm dressed for the opera. You can borrow some of the mine. Oh, wait, Captain has this lovely scarlet cloak you Oh, well, uh, but we must hurry. I am sorry, everyone. Uh, Mary will see you all out. Whoosh, wish. <laughs> you get used to the commotion around here. I'll be right back for all your things. Well, oh, Governor, thank you for defending us. Yes, yes, whatever. And now, Mr. Young and Mr. Taylor, I should like to speak to you about our prior business. We've already given you our answer, sir. Yes, but I don't think you understood the implications of what I was offering you. Uh, that little paper of yours, oh, what was it called? Um, the Apocalyptic Moon. The Millennial Star? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Now, uh, let us be frank. You haven't the talent nor know how to run a successful paper. My paper can help you. We've already been... I was thinking about opening a religious section to my newspaper. You know, a place for the exploration of faith. We don't need your help, sir. <laughs> you have already excited a great deal of antipathy against you among the local clergy. But if you put my major newspaper behind you, it would give you credibility. Then it won't matter who's against you, for your popularity would be enormous. <laughs> so, if I now had sufficient money in my pocket, I could buy the favor of these newspapers and publishers and control their presses. But I suspect popularity would send us all to hell. Yet unpopularity certainly won't fill your pews. Let us be practical, Mr. Young. Sir, I am the most practical man upon this planet. Your daily haunt is a sinking ship, not ours. Whatever do you mean? Uh, we have already investigated your paper, Mr. Fredericks. We will place ourselves in God's hands and... Not your sinking business. You Thank hustling <laughs> bully! <laughs> Mr. Frederick, you shall you soon find a poisonous editorial about your church in the Daily Hornet. You're just going to stop a bit, sir. These are honest men. Don't touch me! How dare you take such she liberties! Said you no harm. Go back to your gutters and your ducks in the factories! Just leave me alone! Hope you have a pleasant day, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the door the whole time. Just polishing the silver. Pay no mind to him, ladies. Oh, and how do we know that you ain't no better than them with your fine high ways? You could betray us to you, turn like a dog on Mr. Fredericks, why not us? Ladies, Mr. Fredericks defends us for flattery to help his paper. The Bible wants us to be as wise as serpent, yet as harmless as doves. Where are you both headed to? Dover Lane, sir. Oh, well, there's some rough streets between here and there. May we chaperone you? Well, we would appreciate the assistance and the company, wouldn't we, Esther? Oh, and there's some things I would like to ask you. Of course. Thank you. Nothing new to you. It's practically open where anyone can see you. Oh, gentle Catherine. Has Georgiana been telling you how much of a villain I am? How can I trust you, Daryl? How can you trust anyone? There is a point when you simply have faith. So you've taken up religion, have you? Oh, I preach a different kind of sermon than they do. You're wicked. And so are you. But you look so good in it. Charmer. Once I started to investigate your family, then I realized what a rare treasure you all were. I thought you were first drawn to me as an individual. So I was. Yet I always know where I am standing, darling. And what did you find? Quite a bit. I keep finding more. I don't understand. All in good time, my dear. Mm. Shoot, even they were scolding for being alone with you again! <laughs> uh, no, I had almost forgotten the thing you had with Catherine today. <laughs> I hardly know where she could be. Stephen, can you stay here while we go look for Catherine? Well, I can have you look for her, I'm sure. No, 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 no. Uh, I need you to stay here in case she comes back while we look through the estate outside. Which right. one of you has the measuring tools? Oh, I do. Uh, then come with me. 
in case we find Catherine, so we can measure her immediately. I understand, miss. Come then. <laughs> that was strange. <laughs> I'm a bit busy, Mr. Lockhart. Uh, now, uh, Miss Whitefield, let's get you into another part of the house. Oh, oh that's all right, Mary. You can, you can leave her here with me. You think uh, that's why, sir? Why are you afraid something wicked is going to happen? Foxes and chickens. Pardon me? Oh, no, I thought, sir. <laughs> I'll be about my business. <laughs> <sighs> Have you told her? About what? A little scrap in the street. I happened upon your little street meeting with Mr. Young and Mr. Taylor quite by chance. Our little debate was hardly of enough consequence to bring up to anyone. I see. I am nothing of consequence, am I, sir? None of us are. I didn't say that. Ah, oh, but you meant it. We inhabit different worlds. I'm... No, Mr. Larkart, we inhabit the same world. Same continent, same country, same city even, and at this very moment to both of our discomfitures, we even inhabit the same world. Swife will please... Sir, and... you're a writer, aren't you? Why, do you think you've read some of my books? Can't read? <laughs> yes, it would make it quite difficult, wouldn't please, it? Please, sir, do not make fun of me. My sister is the one who got that kind of learning. I believe you were trying to drive a point, weren't you? What do you write about? Why? Because writers get into people's heads, sir, and that can be a good thing or a bad thing. You're afraid I'm going to corrupt everyone, aren't you? Sir, the other day you said we were only talking to Mr. Young and Mr. Taylor because we were poor. Why? <laughs> because, well, people in your station much more readily reach for religion, while people in my station much more readily recognize those manipulations that, that the preachers put upon others. We're in a higher class for a reason. Why? Because you were born there? No, because we stay there. Oh. Certain conditions of living create a certain type of individual. In your realm of society, there are thieves, there are drunks, there are murderers. And if I may be indelicate, there are ladies of the night. The morals of your people bring down society. <laughs> Sir, perhaps you haven't been among my kind of people much. But lately, I've had a chance to be among yours, and you know what I found? Oh, let me guess. You think we're all snobs, posh, eh? No, that's not what I was going to say. That's not what I was going to say at all. What I was going to say is that I have found some very lovely people. I have found that being among a different kind of people helps you understand them. You should judge a person, sir, by the choices they have put before them, not the choices that they don't. Well, uh, well Miss Whitefield, that was very nicely stated. Have you ever thought about going into forensics? I'm not that kind of girl, oh, sir. Oh, no, no, you didn't understand what I mean. Um, you have a sharper mind than I gave you credit for. I've enjoyed talking with you. Do you know that? I said, is that a compliment? You've earned it. You've impressed me, Miss... Um, Whitefield. Esther Whitefield. Oh, Miss Esther. I know this may sound strange, but can I see you again? Me, sir? Yes. I've enjoyed our talks. I would enjoy another. Truly? Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I... Well, I guess that would be nice. Very nice. Oh, my. What? Excuse me, Mary, sir. Mary, Miss Georgiana is coming, so the two of you better look a little less comfortable together. <laughs> I am sorry your sister and I weren't able to find Catherine. You'll just have to come back another day. As you wish, Miss Hyde. Good day. <laughs> now, Stephen, we can finally get back to your story. Hmm? Uh, um, what was that? Um, we were deep into your story, your manuscript. Oh, yes, that. <laughs> Student, it shows wonderful promise. I especially love your depiction of the lower classes. The filth, the immorality, the grubbiness. Sure, John, it's just a rough draft. I'm not sure I'm going to keep that bit. Well, you're it... well out your way. Mr. Lowe will be so impressed. I don't know if it deserves that type of praise. Oh, here are my new notes. On page 31... You know, George, John, I, I don't know if I'm up for this. Um... Perhaps, perhaps another time. Well, what do you mean we've had such a good session? Oh, I know, I know. It's, um, I'm not in the mood. Another day, perhaps. <laughs> well, you're right. Yes, I, th I think so. Um, but do you know you can trust me? If there's anything I can help you with, I am your I'm, friend. I'm trying, I'm not. trying, yes. I, there's a certain matter I need to think of. Think of it? A matter, a matter of the heart. Truly? Yes, I've... I've grown very fond of someone, but um, I, I can't discuss it at this time. It, please excuse me. Can it be? It... 
You're the model of subtlety and stealth, my dear. What are you doing back there? Trying not to sneeze. You spies, you were eavesdropping. Which you ought to be glad of, dear Georgiana. What do you There's mean? There's quite a bit going on under your own roof that you are not aware of. Devil, don't. What are you concealing, Catherine? Oh, not with it. It is nothing that you need worry about, Georgiana. Believe it or not, your sister is trying to protect your heart. My heart? Yes, I know. Popular opinion states you haven't got one. Oh, you do. You promised. Stop this taunting. What sort of libelous rumours are going about that would involve my heart? You know, Georgiana, I'm the only friend you have right now. I'm the only one willing to tell you the truth. Good. If you have something to say, then say it. I'll have none of your manipulations. Do you not wonder why your dear Mr. Lockhart dismissed you so easily just now? He did not. Yes, he did. I'm sure he had his reasons. Yes, he certainly has his reasons. It has a lot to do with that little dressmaker of yours, the very pretty one. Devil! There are certain attractions that blind men, even to poverty. Stephen is an honourable man. Whatever his honour dictates in the matter, the fact remains that Catherine and I overheard his declaration of affection. An interest? Affection? Why... He was absolutely singing the praises of that stunning little pauper. <laughs> Ask Catherine, she will tell you the same thing. Catherine? I, I, tell me it is not true. I wish I could, George. It can't be true. I look better, Stephen. I'm sorry. It's George, a lie. What are you plotting? No plot, just concern. <gasps> Georgiana. I know this may be hard to believe, but I'm looking out for you in this matter. I view it as a personal point of honour to shield you from harm. What should it matter to me? Stephen is his own man, and I never entertained any idea. I see what you're thinking. You're thinking that I dare to dream. How could you possibly think that I could dare to dream that Stephen and I would... Let's talk about this later. Excuse me. You cruel man! Would you have preferred for me to keep her in ignorance? You haven't cared a shilling for my sister! Are you so sure of that? You haven't cared a shilling! Since when did you? She is my sister! My sister! Have you no feelings at all? Oh, what have you done to me? What have you made me become? How oh, don't play innocent with me. You showed yourself as willing as I was. You are a wretched man. I'm a wretched woman. Not at all. You are simply upset. I will let you collect yourself. Do not fret, my darling. Until next time. Mary? Mary, I know you're there. Yes. You have observed me from the time of my birth till today. No being as clear as sand, miss. Am I a bad woman? Bad? Uh, I mean, I know I have my faults, but can't be as ugly as all that, Catherine. Oh, Miss Catherine, you're the most beautiful girl in all of it. Uh, I don't mean that kind of beauty, Mary. Am I a bad person? Oh, Miss Catherine. Why, you... You have... a good heart. Be honest, Mary. I have no cause to be dishonest, Miss Catherine. I... You can go. Are you certain? I am certain for once! Know your place, Mary! I said you can go! Yes. Of course, Miss. Oh, she's 
very ill, miss. Well, I will have to deal with oh, you today. Oh, you can't expect this kind of emergency. No excuse. Where's my dress? That's a delay, miss. Delay. The sickening smith. You expect me to pay you more for your time. You're mistaken. We do not expect more. You simply fail to meet your deadline. Oh, my, miss. Well, look who's here. Another visitor. Really, I didn't mean to. Come right Mr. Mr. Young. I'd hope not to see you in my home again. Nothing has been the same since the curse of your last visit. It's going to deliver this invitation. I came to invite you and your family to a meeting we're having. Oh, you are an ignorant fool if you think I would attend any of your spiritual circuses. Miss, let's be a little calm. Ricky Young deserves anybody's respect. Oh, are you contradicting me, dress I am sorry, miss, I did not mean to. Really, Sister Esther, you don't have to. Sister Esther? Have you joined these religionists, Miss Whitefield? My sister has, but I have not. Well, at least you have some sense. But I will. What? I will join them. I have decided this very moment. You are an ignorant fool. Well, I'm not alone in my fool ring. You siren. I will have no more of you, dressmaker. Have your sister bring me my completed dress immediately. Yes, miss, as soon as we finish. Better have it here within the week or I will cut your pay in half. We need that money, miss. Then you'd better be quick about it. Really, besides, she's done nothing. Perhaps you should know a bit of the character of those who follow you, Mr. Young. This young seductress tried to reach past her station into my friend, it Mr. Stephen like Lockhart. Please believe me, it wasn't her. I believe you. How does she even know that we talked? Oh, don't look at me. Despite all your charms and pretty gazes, you were quite simple to think that Stephen would last on your hooks. Your face and figure may have been cut into a fine gown, but you are still coarse and rough. And no amount of lace or frowning will ever change what you were born into. Sister Whitefield, I think it's time for both of us to leave. Do not come back, Mr. Young. You are not welcome here. Neither of you will ever be tolerated here. Really, Miss Hyde, My life waiting. has been nothing but a storm of fury since you come into Mr. Young. If there is a god, perhaps he's trying to tell me something about you and your religion. But what is he trying to say now? God extends his hand to you. If you reject it, you reject the only force that can save you from the coming storm. Show them out, Mary. I'm very sorry, sir. God's work is not done in this house. God is not welcome in this house. Good day, Mr. Fredericks. Better one with you leaving, I assure you, Mr. Young. Get rid of one nuisance only to receive another. I don't want to see Catherine, Daryl. I'm here to see Thomas. I hope you're not here for what I think you are. I'm not. Good. The last thing I need is you as a brother-in-law. Mary. Yes, miss. Fetch Thomas for Mr. Fredericks, will you? So, the fox is after the rooster now, eh? Just get him, will you? Why this sudden interest in male camaraderie? This is none of your business. Perhaps it's not. But I do not trust you, Daryl. I never have. I learned never to trust anybody years ago, Georgiana, especially women. Perhaps there's some wisdom in that, especially this woman. Do not trust me, Daryl. Do not trust me at all. Hello, Daryl. Goodbye, Daryl. How are you, Daryl? As always, Thomas, as always. I'm surprised you asked to see me. Have you come to ask my sister's hand in marriage? Not yet. I never know quite what to make of you, Daryl. Cloaked in mystery, our cunning thinker. I know your secrets, Thomas. Pardon me? I don't like games. Don't play the fool with me. I thought it was well understood it was no act. Yes, the foppish Thomas High, a fool clown and highbrow fellow. <laughs> <laughs> Who would guess that he's an embezzler? What the devil? I'm a businessman, Thomas. I looked into your assets long ago. You what? I always know where I'm standing. I found out that your fortune was much more than your shipping business in Liverpool or your family inheritance. What to suggest? As considerable as the returns from those are. What are you doing? You know, at... I also found out why you have shown so much attention to Jane Fields. Her father has been helping you embezzle money. I presume in return for your help in establishing him as a respectable figure. That's a serious charge, sir. Yes, it is. And it is a true charge. You marrying his daughter will lend them some of that credibility which they have lacked. And in return, he's slowly been sucking money from his company 
and into your bank coffers. Am I accurate thus far? Your silence is illuminating. Look here, what is it that you want? In return for your continual support of my publishing company, I will turn a blind eye to the corruption I have seen and not report it to the authorities. So all of your involvement with my sister was a ploy to get at me? I want to be tied to you by blood, Thomas. I will need your unerring support no matter which of your sisters I marry. Did you say which? Your sister Catherine has developed a conscience. It was the last thing I expected. In any event, Georgiana was the one I was going to try for in the first place, but you saw how that went. So you did come to see Georgiana initially. Oh, the world doesn't understand the value of a woman like Georgiana. <laughs> and I'm not only talking about her excellent mind. These stupid men gallop like studs out of pretty ponies like Catherine. But I tell you from experience, it's the plain women who make the most attentive lover. Now see here! A fine time for displays of moral outrage, Thomas. You are talking about my sisters! They are always somebody's sisters, Thomas! Or mothers, or daughters, or wives. I can have my fun with the pretty girls, surely, but a wife needs to be something else. Georgiana is a rare species. Do you think that I'll just submit to you? Be careful, Thomas. If you think that I am just some light... That is thing. exactly what you are, you stupid Everyone fuck! Everyone underestimates me, Daryl, but I am... I know what your good. game is! And I am prepared for it. I have partners in this. You must understand that there is more than one wolf on your trail. Little tricky bastard that you are. You think your wits are enough to handle my whole pack of professionals? Let me hear you say that you understand. I understand. Good. Keep your eye out for me. In the meantime, we have a clear understanding, do we not? Do we not? Yes, we do. Good. Here and here. 
Do you truly think it's beautiful? I think you're quite beautiful, Miss Hyatt. Poppycock. My face. What can you do for that? Pardon me for saying so, miss, but there's nothing wrong with your face. It's only that... Well, out with it. I don't want to hear it. It is not your face. It is your expression. My, my expression? What do you mean? Well, when a woman has something to live for, a purpose, a meaning, then all of the tightness disappears and she becomes more pleasant to look at. Well, you cannot decorate the soul, Miss Whitefield. Respectfully, I disagree. A soul can be refined. Mine has. Yes, you <coughs> change religions, correct? So you've been refined in what way? I, I dare not say, Miss. Come on, out with it. This is close to me, intimate. This is sacred to me. I will only discuss it if it can remain sacred. All right, then. Sacred. What have you to tell me? May I speak frankly, miss? Of course. You and I are the same. Oh, that is preposterous. But in my temperament, I can seem condescending to others, self-righteous. And do you think that I, I too am... I get so and... afraid, as if someday... Everything will suddenly break. For years I thought, if only I were righteous enough or strong enough, I could prevent that day from happening. What day? The day when it suddenly all unravels. Unravels. Torn to shreds. But how do you prevent that? I needed to be able to leave it behind. Leave it behind? Yes, miss. And I needed somebody there with me. Somebody to save me from the wreckage of such a fall. And it can't be the honourable man, nor the honourable woman. I decided that such a somebody was God. That is where we differ. Do you suppose that a woman, a good woman, let's say, let us say that a good woman could meet a man, a good man, do you not suppose that together they could forestall the day of such a fall? No. For argument's sake, what if it were possible? Miss. Georgiana! Georgiana. What is it, Thomas? You are. Yes? You are absolutely... You are absolutely beautiful. Thomas. I'm blinded. Blind. I, I can't <laughs> see. Honest, honestly, like, like Saul of Tarsus. Thomas, please. Please, please have mercy on me, <laughs> goddess of beauty. Thomas, I'm in no mood for your game. Actually, I am being rather serious. Um, but uh, Stephen is here. What? What is Stephen doing here? Uh, I invited him to go hunting with me. I, I quite forgot your dressmaker was going to be over. Thomas, what a stupid thing to do. Go hurry and fetch Angelina and get me out of this thing. Perhaps I should take my leave. Yes, yes, you need to pay for marrying Miss Whitefield. I will give you the full price plus a 10% bonus for such poority work. Thank you so much. Miss. Yes, yes, go. He simply can't see this dress. I'll take the house Don't be you. a fool. Goodbye. Yes. Angelina! Miss Whitefield, I, I did not know that you were here. I was just on my way out. Oh, so Miss Whitefield. Uh, yes, Mr. Lockhart. How's Esther? My sister is very well, thank you. Good, good. Then uh, would today be a bad day to visit her? Um, Mr. Lockhart. You, you, she told you that we had a conversation the other day, did she not? Yes. Good. Then you understand that I, that I am, that uh, I expressed interest in her? Yes. Good. <laughs> Um, then is today a bad day to visit? I think any day would be a bad day to visit. What do you mean? What are you telling me? Well, she was flattered. Flattered? She told me that if you and I were able to talk when I came by, she told me to give you her apologies, and she hopes you'll have no ill feelings towards her because of her refusal. You're in earnest? Regretfully so. Why? Honestly, sir? She remembers how you treated Brother Brigham and Brother John. She remembers your comments about religion. You are ridiculous! It's not ridiculous, sir. Why must even our relationship be determined by religion? Oh? Frankly, sir, I thought they've always been determined by class. A person can love an Anglican, a Jew, an atheist even. Not even God should be able to meddle in such affairs. Did you press this decision upon her? Is this your fault? Esther makes her own decisions, sir. She happens to desire somebody who would share what is most precious with her, what is most true. You know nothing truth. Excuse me, sir. 
Excuse me, sir. I may not have your education, sir, nor your cultured lifestyle, but I have experienced things that would knock you off your high place, sir. <laughs> Supernatural things, spectacular things, sacred things. Oh, and what if another preacher came along, just as schooled in the art of deception? What then? Who is the true deceiver here, sir? You don't know what you're talking about. Don't I? No, it's not pragmatic. All it does is make you discontent. I did not need this religion to be made discontent. And I am a lucky one. <laughs> I do not have to go into those factories and risk my hand and knife to a spinning jenny. I do not have to prance as a strumpet in desperation. I have not been thrust that low, but I have seen it and smelled it and heard it. Well, that's the way God planned it, isn't it? No, that's the way man has made it. Things are the way they are. And you benefit. I benefit! Don't you, sir? While my people work and slave, your people live off our sweat. You build upon our foundations your presses for our labor. While you grow richer and fatter, with more and more leisure time, we work our bones raw and dwindle away into specters of poverty. Well, I... You are not... It's Certainly you and Esther can... Oh, dear. Sir? You're right. You're absolutely right. I, I, I'm sorry. I did not mean to be contrary. Now, why have you hidden yourself, Miss Winefield? I, I beg your pardon? Well, I find you to be quite remarkable. Yet only now have I thought so. You've been so silent this entire time. I, now I find your voice to be quite thrilling. I better go. No, no, Mr. please. Lockhart. Wait, can I see you? Mr. Lockhart. No, no, I've seen but... something in you. I didn't want them. You don't want me. How can you possibly know what I want? You want a crutch to hold you up. The book. The Apostles book. Please, wait. Wait. Thomas said he gave them a book. Is that the book? Yes. Well, I like books. Good for you. <laughs> May I borrow your book? Sir, this book is precious to me. Wait. If you... Uh, thank you, Miss White. I... Do not be too quick to cast it aside as foolishness, Mr. Lockhart. Make sure you understand the thing before you try to condemn it. Of course not. Well, 
maybe. <laughs> dance with me. Oh, Stephen, I just can't go in. Well, let's dance here then. Pardon me? Well, let us have one dance where we're not bumping into everyone in those horrid lines. <laughs> <laughs> you remember my awkward suit coat? I felt so embarrassed. You were adorable. I remember you wore a pretty dress. Yes, it was Catherine's. It was a bit tight. Oh, I didn't notice. I just remember thinking... Ah, uh, never mind. You thought what? I remember thinking that you were my favourite girl in the whole world. Perhaps I shouldn't have said that just now. <clears throat> I think you should have told me it then. Have we interrupted a private moment? Oh, hello, Daryl. Uh, hello, Stephen. <laughs> Georgiana, is that really you? Mm. Good evening, Daryl. Why, Catherine, you look splendid tonight. Georgiana, you... You look like a queen. Thank you. <laughs> Truly, thank you. Believe me. But there she is in all her glory. What am I mumbling about, my dear? Uh, what do you think of that woman Thomas is escorting around out there? Jane Fields will. She is a detestable woman. Well, if she can make Thomas happy, then she's quite suitable with me. Oh, if you knew her true nature, you wouldn't say so. No. No, I think Papa was right about these sort of things after all. Oh. Dear, you've become a wretched moralist, haven't you? What is it, Daryl? What's a terrible thing oh, here? Do you know each other? I must leave. Uh, oh, wait! I'm wait. sorry, dear Captain, I must cut the ball now, Lenny. Oh, why are you Personal you... matter, my dear. Spend some time, sir. Get out of my way, old man. What have you been up to these days? The usual? Get out of my way. Yes, yes, always your way. No matter who gets crushed in the meantime. I don't need your lectures. Yes, yes, avoid the lectures. Avoid the morality, avoid the voices from the past. Avoid the voice of conscience. Please, please get out of my way. I had hoped I'd been misinformed when I heard you were involved with that scoundrel, Catherine. How do you know each other? He wanted to partner with me. I investigated his past and found some rather malignant pieces of information. <laughs> no. No. Catherine, Mr. Fredericks is not Mr. Fredericks. He is already married. He has a wife in London. A wife he left expecting their first child. At the time he was so steeped in debt because of his gambling, he simply fled London and came here under a new identity. I do not want to cause you pain, but I do this to prevent a deeper hurt. Excuse me, this is a bit overwhelming. Catherine, how extensive was your relationship with that man? How dare you? How dare you accuse me of something like that? I have not accused you of anything. <laughs> I thought I saw you commit a Harold. Georgiana, my girl. <laughs> I've been waiting for you all evening. I have some important things I need to bring up to you. But first, this is my friend, Mr. Stephen Lockhart. He's been wanting to meet you. It's a pleasure. I think you'll both benefit from the meeting. If you have Georgiana's approval, I'm sure we will. <laughs> I suppose you have some sort of manuscript or something to show me? Well, I, I, am I that transparent? Sir, I can spot a writer a mile away. <laughs> friendship with a man. Uh, we're doing a bit of business together, that's all. Business? Yes, business. Is that what you call 
Cold what? Why would it be cold business? The walls have ears, sir. <laughs> and flies, and windows, and pictures. What are you saying, Mary? I overheard your conversation with Mr. Frederick, sir. Mary, you were behind the door. Just polishing the silver, sir. For once, Mary, mind your own damn business. I oh, know, sir. I mean the whole pedigree. Then you know that I am too caught up with it now. Oh, sir. Uh, say you're having a picnic and a hornet comes upon your food. And a, a hornet? Yes, a, a, a pest, an insect yes. with, with spindly legs and black eyes and a fearsome stinger. And say this hornet tries to infest your food. What do you do? I... Would you swat it away? No, because he'll sting my hand. So then what would you do? I don't know. I, I deputise him, give him a regiment and send him off to England. Oh, sir, be serious. What would you do? I don't know. But say you have a stick, a big one, and you, uh, this hornet falls upon your food. Then what would you do? Would you smash the hornet and the food together? Yes, to save the rest of the food. Then, sir, this is my suggestion about Mr. Fredericks. Buy a stick. A big one. <laughs> Magic rubbish. You know I read such things. You make a woman oh, It sounds like she's in one of her moods again. Uh, perhaps I should go in and... Oh, don't touch the kettle while it's hot, sir. <laughs> is... A retreat in order, then. I. <laughs> Georgiana. What is it, Catherine? I'm worried about you. No need to worry. Something is wrong. Nothing is wrong. Something has been wrong since the ball. Do I have to repeat myself? Nothing is wrong. I've been staring out the windows for weeks now. You're waiting for him to come. For who to come? I may not have your kind of mind, but I'm not stupid. What do you care about us? I care about you. Since when? How did war go? He... He showed interest, didn't he? Didn't he? Yes. And he expressed that interest. You could say that. But... Since then, he hasn't come. He has not come. Oh, Catherine, do you think that a man could have regard, or could have affection over a woman like me? Georgie, of course he could. Mr. Lockhart is here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would cheer you up. I'll bring him right in. Good luck, Georgie. It's so good to see you, Stephen. As it is to see you, Georgiana. I just wondered what took you so long to come by since the ball. What could have possibly detained you for so... Uh, um, Something's wrong. I don't know what to say. I don't... What is wrong, Stephen? You look so rigid. Please sit down. I have something to tell you. Do you know you can tell me anything? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm leaving. Leaving? To America. America? Yes, I... I've come to tell you how much your friendship has meant to me all these years, and... What and, is this about? Um, it's a personal decision. A personal decision you cannot share with me? Oh. Stephen, I thought... After the ball, we were so close. I hope you didn't misinterpret it. <laughs> you kissed me. I know. I know, I meant it. I meant it then. Then? It was a mistake. I'm so it was sorry. It not a mistake. Yes, it was. I acted rashly. I'm, I'm deeply sorry. That is not the sort of thing a woman wants to hear about her first kiss. I feel... I've been tortured with guilt this whole time. Please I've been trying... Please spare me any prepared speeches you had. No, no, I joined the Latter-day Saints. Yeah. I said it. Oh, oh 
dear. <laughs> is it about the dressmaker, then? No, it's not that. But she is a pretty girl. No, I'm sincere in my conversion. Oh, it is the dressmaker. Georgia, I don't jump to such a dramatic, dramatic. conclusion. I... No, a man like you falling for such a girl is positively trivial. It is beneath you. Oh, Georgiana, this has nothing to do with the dressmakers. And my poor darling, it has nothing to do with you. Who has it to do with then? Me. It has everything to do with me. I've I've been searching, inquiring, but I didn't know it. You now are a dying really... wolf, even like I am. I already said that we... Will you abandon the vigor of our friendship for such gutter Don't bring them into it. They're women of kindness, women of gentleness. Women of weakness. Stop making goddesses out of the delicate porcelain-faced nymphs of the ignorant. Georgiana. How can you be so vain? Can't you see it's the ugliest part of you? Vain? Vain am I? With a face like mine? I am not one of these crystallized corpses of beauty. Please, Georgia, what I'm feminine qualities, what prancing movements, what horrid lace and belt do I possess to make me vain? It is the conceit of your own mind, your own self-regard. I'm... You are defensive. Because I have intellect and depth while these religionists have nothing but a polished husk. Georgie, can you not see? What? Do I threaten you? Do you feel as if I would debunk your manhood? Georgiana, I'm trying to... Are these dressmakers so much more to your liking because they will bend to your will? Georgiana, this isn't a contest between you and Esther. Tell me why else you would take this fantastic journey. It is true belief. I believe this. I listened to it and there was truth in it. It sat so well with me. I, I there can't... is no truth. Only the ranting and raving and flinging the name of God about as if it actually meant something. And that's the difference between us. It does mean something to me. I'm a believer now. <laughs> believe in what? <laughs> Will you abandon the pinnacle of the world for that wild-eyed beast of a nation? I've brought up, I've been brought up a gentleman. But I've I cultivated the soul of a beggar. Well, it's better to serve God than to be the slave of such Pharisees. Pharisees do not be deceived. I'm not deceived, Georgiana. I don't need England's social structure to buoy me up. And I don't need the good opinion of any man, woman, or devil. Stop I... it! So you are a convert, then? Yes. One of the religious... Faithful. Yes. Oh. Georgie, I'm trying well, to share right. this with you. What is to happen with that? It's nothing to me now. It was only vain ambition. Your I'm writing just... means nothing. Your country means nothing. Your society means nothing. Not what they once did. And am I nothing as well? Georgie, I... I deserve an answer. For you deeply, but I cannot stay. I'm, Do you love me, Stephen? Love? I hardly know what that word means. I'm, I've changed. I, I put on a new dress, a new face. It's like with the dressmakers. I admired them. They lifted me to a certain point, and you, you've, you've lifted me even higher. But it's greater hands that have borne the prince of nails that have really brought me bravery. So, have you come here to cut me loose, or to ask me to go with you? What kind of a question is that? <laughs> not sacrifice my life on your altar! I will not be controlled by the dictates of a man I have never seen in a god I have never heard! Well, your feelings on the matter have simplified things for me greatly. Stephen! I would give up everything for you! You are substance! I can hold you in my hands! If only you would abandon this quest of Quixote. I've come to say goodbye, Georgie. Stephen! No, no, no. I believe in this. You and I, we're, we're too different. We are the same. No, we're not the same, for there's a part of me that you've never known. For it's foreign to you. It was foreign to me too, but now I long for something you've never sought after, never understood, it never acknowledged. I, I can love. I do no, love. it's not that either. Goodbye, Georgiana.
ruin among them. Therefore, they were not rich and poor, bond and free, but they were all made free and partakers of the heavenly gift. What do you think, Mary? I think you read real well, miss. What else? I think Miss Georgiana would have a fit if she knew I was letting you read to me from that book. <laughs> what do you think, Mary? I think you got your religion. And I got my religion. <laughs> <laughs> I warn you, she was quite the zealous missionary, Mary. Well, some cows are happy to well, wander from the herd, but the rest of us are happy to follow the path we're given. Just show me the trough and I'm happy. <laughs> but at least I can give the two of you a proper send-off. <laughs> oh, I'll get that for you. Now. Oh, Mr. John, what are you doing here? I am wondering the same thing about you, Mary. Well, uh, I'll become friends with these nice young ladies here. If you are no such thing. Oh, well, don't go busting your cause. Mr. Traitor, I will deal with you at home. Uh, Miss Hyde, it's good to Do not put on your false kindness with me, you hypocrite. You were only trying to I help. do not want to hear it. I do not want to hear your kindnesses or your pities or your sympathies. Miss George Hutton, you may be my master in your fine house. But this is their place, and so I insist that... What's that? The dressmakers recognize it. I spent a great deal of time on it over the past several weeks. They know every stitch of this dress. This horrid shroud. We have meant you no harm. You... You led me down the path to lonely away. You so earnestly said that I was beautiful. This fitted me. Well, have this for your troubles and cares. Oh, I do not need your beauty. I do not want your dependence. I will not debase myself with your embarrassing costume any longer. Miss Georgiana, that is enough. Do not raise your voice to me, Mary. I am ashamed of you, Mum. You have betrayed our family. You have broken my trust. You will have no forgiveness from me. Then release me. What? Release me. If this is the gratitude you give those that you depend on, then I wouldn't spend another day in your proud house. I depend on no one. Oh, miss. I've raised you. I've dressed you. I've fed you. I've trained you in many ways. You can put on your high airs for your fancy friends, but not here. Not with those that know the truth. Don't you dare mm -hmm. to miss. You have such strength. Your words can have such power. Then you twist that power into something weak. If there is one thing I am not, it is weak. Please, Miss Hyatt, perhaps we can... <gasps> Stop oh. it! I will not listen to it. Georgiana! Please! Oh. Hannah! Oh! What, what just happened? Haven't you out of your mind? No, Stephen, wait. It's not what it looks like. I did not mean... Then why do you have a dagger in your hand? I did not mean for that to happen. I'm sorry. If you need to strike someone, strike me. If you need to vent your pain, your jealousy, your petty pride, aim your flames at me. Don't get close to me. Put the dagger down, Georgia. Georgie, I... business together. We are no longer in business together. Yes, we are. Many business partners dislike one another, but they each have something the other wants. You have my future and I have your past. Now go in there and bring Catherine in here and we'll talk like civilized people. Oh, there you are. I've been waiting for you. You. Get out. Get out. Get out. Catherine and I, we are having a bit of trouble at the moment. Thomas, go bring her in here. 
What are you up to? Just do it. What are you plotting? You always assume the worst. Only when you are around, you have the smell of filth wherever you go. Ah, the scent was already here. I just uncovered it. Now all of you listen. I'll be straightforward. I'm here to propose a marriage. A marriage of convenience. What? How dare you? I have you all in a more dangerous situation than any of you realize. How dare will your arrogance ever cease? All you have to do now is decide whether it is Catherine or Georgiana who marries me. I don't care who anymore as long as I'm literally tied to this family. You have a wife already, a child! I would you never marry- You talk! You'll cut her again! Yes, yes, it may have been hopeful, but now Thomas Georgiana, tell your brother to lower the dagger. If he hadn't grabbed it, I would have. Look how your brother threatens me and your sister. She provoked me. Your family is the greatest enemy you have. They are no such thing. Do you truly think so? Do you think that Catherine and I have had a pure platonic relationship? Her reputation would be ruined if the world discovered her secret life with me. Catherine! And, and Thomas! <laughs> now this will be a shock to you. Thomas is as pure as snow. Georgiana, naive. <laughs> you are so naive. The great intellect Georgiana Hyatt. The sentinel of wisdom is ignorant of what goes on in her own house. Your dear brother, your sweet brother, why? He is a criminal, guilty of embezzlement, bribes, graft. Your own fortune is now caught up in illegal affairs. Impossible. I am sorry. So desperately sorry. Thomas, what have you done with father's fortune? It was father who got me started into the whole wretched business. What? I am truly sorry, Georgie. I know how you love the illusion he set up for you. My father was the more, most moral man I have ever met. The embezzling has been going on for years, long before Thomas ever knew about it. No! You overspent your inherited fortune, so he had to find another way. <laughs> this is not true! Georgiana, when father first told me about it, I was shocked. Then I just got deeper and deeper into it as father got more and more persuasive. My wits hadn't a chance, you see. But, but since his death, I, I have been trying to get things worked out honestly again. I, I, I've still had to make deals, uh, agreements. I've st still had to borrow small amounts, but, but you must believe me, I am trying to work it all out. I have enough evidence to lock your brother into prison. So if you care for your brother, if you care for your reputation, if you care for your family's Ouch. name... And I will have none of it. I will not allow you to blackmail me, nor will I allow you to blackmail my family. If I have to, I will grind you down with my own hand! Now all of you, listen. I am a reasonable man. I don't want any of this to get messy, but I know your secrets. Forget any advances I made towards Catherine or Georgiana or anybody. For all I care, I wouldn't give a single pound for such sirens anymore. I want to know the profits of your business, Thomas, or I'll reveal everything. <laughs> Why are you laughing, you ugly Gorgon? Oh, but you too, you utterly worthless creature. Bite your tongue or I'll cut it out. Could you be more predictable, our classic villain? I'm deadly serious, Georgiana. Please, for all you have meant to me. No, you're afraid. Afraid and desperate. I will reveal everything. Do it then, reveal everything. It matters not to us, but we shall see you fall with us, Mr. Fredericks. Fall? Why don't you see I'm at my high point? Until tomorrow. What do you mean by that? I received a letter yesterday from Mr. Harold Lowe. From... from Lowe? Why, yes, he strikes a chord with you, doesn't he? Did you really think I didn't see you storm out after he arrived at our ball? He's nothing to me. Mr. Lowe knew all about your failing business and your desperation to find capital to save yourself with. And tomorrow in his paper, which is read by multitudes of people in London, he's going to publish an article, an expose of sorts. He's going to publish it about you, Daryl. You're lying. No, by the terror I see come upon you, I see you believe me quite readily. I will kill you all! Then trust the damned, Daryl! But be prepared for the curse that will come upon you afterwards! You do not frighten me with your curses. You are nothing. A hollow human being, not to even read. I am real enough to kill you. Your fruits, your seduction, your manipulations, nothing but the cries of a man who has realized he is fair of everything. And all he can do is shout into the whirlwind. Protect 
pretending to be its conqueror. Georgiana. Such softness now. Are you really going to pretend to love me now? For I am sick to death of man's fickle love. Georgiana. <clears throat> Dear Georgiana. Aren't you as tired as I am? Oh, oh Georgiana. You are magnificent, we're saved. No, we are certainly not saved. Oh, you bruised that serpent's head, you smashed it. You won't dare threaten to us again. No! You sent him into the darkness where he belongs! You don't understand. He was not the real enemy. He was not the real threat. Well, Georgiana, not there's real. nothing to be afraid of any longer. There was no letter. There will be no article. What? I made up the whole thing to frighten him away. You made it up? It was a bold, convincing choice. No! You have given us our futures back. You have given no, us... No, stop it! I want no more of your reassurances of smooth roads and conquering opposition. Look at me. Look at yourselves. We are revealed. No, he knows that you None of us is wholesome or worthy. Stephen was right to cut himself off from us. Georgiana, calm down. I have been calm my whole life, Thomas. I have been filled with an arrogant smugness, while our lives have been threatened and our principles have been prostituted. We have won. You have won. Won what? My dignity. What have you won, Catherine? Your virtue. What have you won, Thomas? Your integrity. We have our own sins to answer for. Nobody answered. Thought all the servants were gone. Uh, on the last relic to leave, <laughs> I've gathered all my things. Yes, so I see. Mary, that luggage looks nearly as large as you are. Well, I'm a bit of a collector of first memorabilia, sir. Aye, they've had to sell nearly everything, haven't they? When Mr. Thomas uh, turned himself in, the courts were lenient, especially since his father was mostly responsible for the damage. <laughs> oh, he was lucky, but. All the debt had to be paid, and a considerable interest. How so do? This house of lovely memories. Maybe for you. So oh, devastated. Mary! Oh, oh, such a waste. Such a damn waste. Well, has no one stood forth to hell? No, oh, they tried. Mr. Lowe, he was nearly red in the face when they told him they wouldn't take his help. What? They, they did that? Yes. Georgiana, is she here? Oh, I, I don't manage things the way I used to around here. Are you here to... I, I'm not sure why I'm here. I felt compelled. I see. Mary, you know the Hyatt's better than they know themselves. I need your counsel. How would you... Uh, uh, what would you say to... Blast, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Do you love Miss Georgia? Yeah, you've hit the questions. <laughs> well, 
And I... I just eat, Mary. I don't rightly know. Her heart is not a baby rattle for you to toy with. Yes, I see that, Mary. Well, very good, then, what, sir. What do you suggest? I don't I... suggest anything. I think it's hard time you all started making your own decisions, oh. don't you? <sighs> sir? Well, it's not very helpful, Mary. Not to be disagreeable, but yes. It is. I'm trying to grow something here yeah? in my heart. Well, it's proven pretty shallow so far. If that's not fair. She needs deep roots. She needs the elements, sir. Uh... Oh, I'd best be going. Miss Georgiana. Oh. She's been mighty fond to me. <laughs> she found me a new position and... She's ordered a fancy coach to come and pick me up. <laughs> Imagine me in a fancy coach. It's <laughs> wonderful, Mary. Oh, yeah. mm. oh, but to get this down there, they won't wait forever. Oh. Oh. Mm. oh, it's beastly heavy. Yes, it looks rather heavy, too. If only someone would help me. Yes. Mm. Perhaps we can get one of the butlers to help. There's Jeffrey. no servants left, sir. No kindness for an oh, old woman. Right, right. That just leaves me then, doesn't it? Oh, oh, but sir! No, no, no. No arguments. You just sit down and rest a bit. All right? Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you, sir. I'll be thank back in a moment. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Don't an ancient heart like mine. Mary, I'm... Mary, is that the coach is ready for you? Georgiana. I think this is my cue. No, Mary, please. I love you, dearie. Goodbye. So, Georgie, you look lovely. I, I don't think I've seen your hair down like that since we were children. You are not angry with me anymore. How would it matter if I was? I think it might. I'm not angry with you. Are you angry with me? No. And where does that leave us? At the beginning? <laughs> no, we can never go back to the beginning again. Georgiana, don't you remember the love that we had for each other when we were children? Love, it was, it was so simple. Love. Can't we go back to it? Stephen, what of the dressmakers? What of them? Is the one that I... Is Miss Hannah right? The wound looked worse than it was and there was no infection. Once we stopped the bleeding, she was fine. <laughs> good. Very good. <coughs> and have you promised yourself... Oh, to... no, no. I, I no longer harbour any romantic intentions towards... either of them. Then are you still going to America? Yes. I leave for Liverpool tomorrow and then off on a ship. To follow your god? Yes. No God is stripping me of all of my comforts. Well, if God is truly the God of those that mourn, those that are acquainted with grief, the downtrodden and the outcast, then you're closer to him than you've ever been in your entire life. You're in his domain now, his sphere. Even Bridge didn't have room for either of us, did it? Perhaps we outgrew it. Just as we outgrew each other. Georgie, you really think no, we outgrew it? listen to me for a minute. 
somewhere along the way you may have saved my soul. You saved mine. No, I said listen. We are traveling different paths. We'll merge them onto the same path. No, not different paths, different countries. But can we go to the same country? You with me, or, or me with you? Different realms, Stephen. Before you came to me with such determination and commitment, don't lose that. You saw clearly then, see clearly now. Follow your vision. Let me just say this. It was not a mistake. The kiss. No. Not just the kiss. Everything. The bye. The friend. You can come in now, Mary. Mary? The world has changed. One last thing. We were going to take you with us, Father, but we... I can't. You will be our cherubim. And this will be your flaming sword. Oh, no more tears. We are in a new domain. A new sphere.